In this video we'll be looking at the console challenge which is a web challenge on Hack the Box. It's medium difficulty and the description says could you please check the console of your Chrome. So we launch an instance here and let's go and have a look at it. You can see we have our PHP info page here and what we don't normally see here is this make sure your PHP console make sure you load PHP console in order to be prompted for a password so let's um, Google PHP console you can see I've already done some googling around this PHP console you see this here um, is actually a Chrome extension. Let me see, is this the install Google Chrome extension? Let's have a look at this. And we get 404 not found. So this doesn't actually exist anymore, but the source code is still available on GitHub. So let's download the source code. I'll download this to the desktop. and let's switch over to Chrome for now so open up Chromium and if we go to our extensions here and manage extensions make sure that developer mode is enabled and then you should be able to uh, load and unpack the extension so we'll go to the desktop here grab our PHP console extension hit open you need to install PHP in your okay that's fine let's just leave that as that let's try and access the page because we know that we don't need to install the it on our server because we already have a server here which has it installed and make sure you load PHP console in order to be prompted for a password so let's have a look let's um, pin our extension open that up and then we get this console authorization password login and nothing appears to happen um, so open up the developer tools and let's try and log in again you can see here the request goes through we have our request we have Let's have a look at our request headers there. In our request headers, we have this cookie PHP console server equals five, and then PHP console client equals, and then this base64 encoded string. So if we go back to our, let's um, close some of this down for now. If we go back to our Firefox and check out the developer tools there, let's reload the page and no parameters for this request uh, headers look at the request headers so we have the PHP console server here but we don't have the same values in you can see that this one actually had the base64 encoded value and in return then our response doesn't have uh, anything related to the PHP console whereas if we look at our Chrome where we have the extension installed we've sent this request it has this base64 encoded value and then the response has actually returned this PHP console uh, and then an auth variable with a public key and uh, its success is set to false. So let's see if we can decode the base64 encoded string here. Grab a copy of that. If we go into burp and go into the hackverter, it'll just paste that automatically. You can see that's decoded and it's essentially got the same thing that it's returned. So where it returned here, protocol 5 auth you can see here we have php console client 5 auth we have our public key which is exactly the same but then instead of is success false we have a token here so we want to try and find out how this token is generated let's um let's try and run that again let's do password login and let's grab the same value, copy that, and go back to Hackverter. Okay, token beginning 06A0. Now let's do password 
two. Log in and see if we can decode that. So this one was beginning, the token was 06A. If we paste that in, you can see that the token's updated, but the public key stayed the same. So our token's directly related to the password that we're entering. So we want to try and find out what's the correct password. So we know that the source code is actually available for this online. Um, even though the extension is no longer available in the Chrome store, we still have all the source code on GitHub. So we've already downloaded the extensions source code. Let's go in and have a look at the actual the back end where we also have this auth.php. Here you notice we have a hard coded password hash salt, never change it. And the hash function that's been performed, we have a SHA-256, so it's worth bearing this in mind. And get token. So the, the token is being generated, and the token is a hash, which is the SHA-256 hash. Uh, sorry, where was that? Hash function. SHA-256. Um, and it's running a SHA-256 on this password hash concatenated with the public key. So the password hash plus the public key, is sh is we run a SHA-256 against it. And the password hash is, you see here, get password hash. You see the password hash is assigned here. So we have the public key, which is hard coded. We have a password hash, which is calls this function get password hash and passes in the password. And that function is is running hash on the password and the password salt. So um, let's just open up Sublime here. We have a token is equal to the hash function, which is SHA256 of password hash plus public key and the password hash is equal to um, the result of get password hash on our password and the get password hash is a hash to so a SHA-256 let's say SHA-256 on the password plus the salt which was never change it so essentially we want to see if we can loop th brute force this by looping through um, a list of passwords and performing this operation. Run SHA-256 on the password concatenated with this salt and then run SHA-256 on the result of that concatenated with the public key. So I've written a script in Python to do this for us so let's go and take a look at that. Minimize some of these windows. and open up console.py oh wrong wrong place okay and the the python script here we just assign some values at the top so we've got a password list i've just picked one with 10,000 passwords in it we've assigned our salt which is the hard-coded salt from the github that we just looked at. We have a public key which we saw in burp suite stayed the same each time that's based on the IP address let me just verify that the yeah this public key ID is based on the IP address so let's um, go back to the code here and what we're saying is let's loop through each password in our password list strip it to make sure there's no new line or anything on it and if it's not an empty password we want to let's get our thing back here we want to generate a token and to generate the token first we want to get a SHA-256 of so the password plus the salt you can see we've done that here and then the token we want to do a SHA-256 of the result of this with the public key and we've used the SHA-256 sum hex method here which is in Pwn, it's a handy, handy function and the same for base64 encoding uh, later on. So 
once we've once we've generated this we want to build up the cookie so we know that the cookie value was in here so we're just building up something similar php console server equals five uh, oh sorry that's a different cookie so for this one php console client equals five and then we have our auth with our public key and then our token is base 60 uh, sorry our token is the token that we've generated here and then finally we base 64 encode that because uh, you can see here that we've base64 decoded this value so eventually we need to base64 encode it and put it back into a cookie. So if we do that we make a request to this URL with that cookie and then we check the response headers because there's a PHP console header let's go back and verify that as well. We had this response, it was a PHP console header and we had auth and then is success false so we're running through this and we're saying JSON load this so that we can in we can loop through the we can access the indexes of different uh, dictionary items and then we'll say if auth is success is not equal to false then we found the password or if auth is success is true essentially um, and then we'll print out the pa password, we'll close our word list, quit the program. We have this counter here just in case there's some problems or the word list isn't big enough or or we want to see how fast it's going. It's just going to say every time that we've done, tested 100 passwords it'll let us know. And if it fails to find it, it'll print this out at the end. So let's grab the URL. I think the URL might be different to when I solve the challenge. It's got a different port number by the looks of it. Let's paste that in and let's try and run Python console start looping through we'll see how quickly it goes see a hundred attempts two hundred attempts three hundred attempts four hundred attempts Um, once we get the correct password here, we can go and try and actually log in to the application. Another thing we could have done is, if the password is correct, print out the header here. Um, you can see it got the correct password there, so let's grab a copy of that. Let's go back to Chrome and let's try and enter that password. And there you see we get a debug. It comes up with the flag. If we go in and have a look at our headers, we have this debug message with the flag in it. So if we, if we knew to, where to look for the flag we could have um, said if this is success equals true then print out this data thing and then we'll get the flag. But um, there's no need to do that anyway. The script's all working okay. We've got a flag. Um, and there we go. I hope you've enjoyed this challenge. If you want to take a look at this script or want to try and run it, I'll upload this to my GitHub, which will be linked in the description. Alright, thanks. Have a good day.